Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters, my name is Sister B and welcome to Islamic Audio Bites. I have come across a few articles on Dr. Mashur of Hussain's website regarding the situation that we have at present, namely COVID-19. Let's read. First article, what will you learn from the COVID-19 pandemic? People ask me, how can we begin to understand the divine plan for the creation of COVID-19? As a student of the Quran, I reply by saying, there is total wisdom in all of Allah's plans, whether we can comprehend them or not. A mutation took place in a single virus somewhere far away some time ago in an animal that we will not be certain of. It has brought the world economy to its knees, left politicians panicking, doctors fearful and scientists bewildered. We see societies in despair, feeling helpless and in perhaps most cases, hopeless. What can we learn in this time of isolation and underemployment? Below, I present five passages from the majestic Qur'an that provide comfort in these trying times. Purpose of creation. This crisis has demonstrated how materialistic our society is becoming. We overvalue our worldly pursuits. We have become workaholics consumed by work. COVID-19 is a reminder that you were not created for work only. Our true work is to worship our Lord, our King and God. It is to care for each other and to benefit one another. Allah says, continue reminding, the reminder benefits the believers. I created jinn and human beings only to worship me. I don't want any sustenance from them, nor for them to feed me. Allah is surely the sustainer, the superpower and strong. The wrongdoers will have the punishment like their ancestors, so they shouldn't ask me to hasten it. Ad Dariyad 55-59 Life has a purpose. COVID-19 reminds us of the fragility and shortness of life. Through this, those who reflect deeply will begin to acknowledge the gifts of our wonderful Lord, the giver of life. This is one way that will enable you and will be able to keep your ego in check. It is reminding us that no matter how great we think we are, we're dependent on the Almighty Lord. Allah says, Did you reckon we created you without a purpose and you wouldn't be returned to us? How exalted is Allah, the true King? There is no God beside Him, Lord of the honoured throne. Whoever calls on another God for which he has no proof along with Allah, his account rests with his Lord. The disbelievers never succeed. al Mu'minun 115-117 Maintaining family ties. We are mindful of our family and relatives. In our previous busy lives, we may have neglected our loved ones. Another lesson is to strengthen our family unit. Through our father and mother, COVID-19 is forcing us back into our homes so we can rebuild relationships in our homes. This is also showing us how connected we must be, whether in Wuhan or Westminster our humanity is universal. It's telling us that the borders that we have put up have little stopping power. This virus doesn't require a passport. Allah reminds us, please be mindful of your Lord. He created you from a single person and created his partner from him. And then from the pair, he spread countless men and women throughout the world. Be mindful of Allah in whose name you make demands from each other. Beware of breaking blood relationship. Allah watches over you. An Nisa 1. Coping with life's tests. We are reminded to be patient, not to panic, staying calm, waiting for the storm to end. It's beyond anyone's control. It's happened many times in history and will pass. So rest assured, there is an end to COVID 19. This is a time of reflection and understanding. What good have we done? What wrong have we done? Is there a lesson we can learn from our mistakes? This may become a new beginning. Allah instructs us, believers find strength through patience and prayer. 
Allah is with those who are patient. Do not speak irreverently about those who were killed fighting in Allah's way, that they are dead, rather they are living, though you do not sense it. We will certainly test you with fear, hunger, loss of wealth, health and harvests. Give good news to those who are patient and who, when they are struck by misfortune, softly say, we belong to Allah and are returning to him. These are the ones who shall be blessed and kindly treated by their Lord. They are guided. Al-Baqarah 153-157 Gain after strain The verse below was revealed for the consolation of the Messenger, peace be upon him, when he, peace be upon him, was facing tough times. It's in a tone that displays friendship and love. The Surah expresses the incredibly elevated position of the Messenger, peace be upon him. Despite this honour, he, peace be upon him, is told to strive enthusiastically in Allah's worship. This is a powerful reassurance that after every difficulty, there is always ease. COVID-19 reminds us that life is cyclical, hardship is followed by ease, as COVID-19 is just a phase in this cycle. We do not need to panic, it shall pass soon, inshallah. Allah reminds us, didn't we expand your chest and lifted your burden, which weighed down your back? We raised high your honour. Indeed, every hardship follows ease. Once you have finished your daily tasks, carry on seeking your Lord passionately in worship. al Inshira. Another article by Dr. Musharraf Hussain titled, How Will We Win the Battle Against Coronavirus? As the battle against coronavirus intensifies, the death toll rising by the hour and hospital ICUs overspilling with patients, temporary mortuaries being set up outside hospitals, and each one of us knows someone who has COVID-19. The fear is mounting. This is a testing time. Time to be patient and strong. Here, I offer seven powerful tips for making your home a spiritual place of learning and devotion. The messenger, peace be upon him, won many battles and his victories show us how we can win the battle of life. The most important step was recognising the enemy. A lot of the time, we are clueless about our enemy. Often, it's misidentified. A competitor trying to win my customers or someone who is jealous of me and trying to undermine my credibility or someone wanting to take away my money. This is a typical human response. However, in the thicket of the Battle of Uhud, the Muslims were told, do not be disheartened or sad, you will come out on top when you are true believers. al Imran 139 Here, the Qur'an identified the real enemy. Attitude, the way you think, your mindset. It isn't what is happening outside that will put you down, but it's your response to the crisis. As we witness the unfolding of the corona pandemic on our screens, Hour by hour, in front of our eyes, we are scared. This is what will discourage us, make us give up, even make us angry. It will drive us nuts and will ask the wrong questions. Like, why me, my lord? We must avoid this to win the battle against this virus. Our hope and optimism must remain at the highest level. This will only happen if we have the conviction of faith and trust in the Almighty Lord. So we must stake our faith in the promise he made us, I am with you. So, have unwavering trust in the words of God that will bring help. To show this trust and confidence in Allah, our Almighty Lord, let's turn to him in devotion as we stay home. Make your home a masjid. Here are some ideas to make your home a place of learning and devotion. Did you know that early Muslims living in Makkah had no masjid? So their homes were the masjid. The disciples would pray at home, lead jamaat and teach the Qur'an. Today, because of the coronavirus pandemic, many of you will be missing attending and praying at the masjid. Nevertheless, this time offers an opportunity to again practice an ancient way, the way of the early oppressed Muslims. So, let's make the most of these days of social isolation. Your home too can become a masjid. Here are some practical steps to take. Number one, I believe it's important to have a routine. Run your day as you used to. 
get changed before breakfast, don't stay in your pyjamas all day, have mid-morning tea at 10.30, light lunch at 12.30 and make the intention to pray all your prayers on time. 2. Control how much news and TV you and your family watch. I have the habit of watching Channel 4 News at 7pm and then BBC News at 10pm only. That's a lot. Avoid as much as you can during the daytime. Too much worrying news can be depressing. Instead, find alternative activities that will enable you to spend quality time with your children. For example, try something new. Arts and crafts, write about your experience in our newly launched invitation magazine and don't forget to exercise regularly. Walking, lunges, press-ups. 3. Your environment. Select a lounge or another room for praying together in Jamaat. Do your own iqama before the prayer. If there is no male at home, women can still pray in Jamaat, but stand in the same row. Invite young children to join in as well. 4. I recommend you giving a lesson to your family from my book titled Tokens of Wisdom or an alternative resource. My book has 45 chapters from Imam Nawawi's collection of hadith. It's a beautiful collection for moral, social and spiritual development. YouTube has a wide range of good Islamic talks that you can listen to. You can also watch my dars quran live on Wednesday at 8pm. Get into the habit of listening to at least one Islamic-related talk a day. Number 5. Go the extra mile. A prophetic sunnah is to fast on Monday and Thursday. I follow this beautiful sunnah and so do thousands of dietitians and nutrition experts globally. I strongly recommend praying nuffles in addition to the five daily prayers. Ishraq, voluntary prayer after sunrise, the mid-morning of jasht, after or before breakfast, awabin, after maghrib. 7. Ensure you look out for vulnerable relatives and neighbours. Social distancing does not mean that we stop caring. The masjid is a place to remember Allah. With the seven steps above, your home can become more spiritual and blessed. Useful du'as to recite. Here are two impactful prayers. Learn them and read them for confidence and reassurance. O oh Allah, I seek your protection from leprosy, dementia, infectious diseases and other serious illnesses. In the name of Allah, Nothing on earth nor in the sky can harm me the slightest. He is the hearing and the knowing. Another short article uh, by Dr. Musharraf Hussain is Safeguarding Your Moral and Spiritual Health. Four tips to safeguard your moral and spiritual health during the lockdown. The COVID-19 pandemic has clearly shown how vulnerable our world is. Gorbachev, the former president of the Soviet Union said, We have seen once again how fragile our world is and how great is the danger of sliding into chaos. All countries face this common threat and no country can cope with it alone. Most world leaders have spoken words to this effect and this is adding to the growing fear in the public of the severity of the pandemic. However, despite so much economic loss, deprivation of our identity and work, we humans are ingenious and capable of coping with difficulties. This is helped by the fact we are optimistic creatures. Here I venture to present four tips on developing resilience and foresight to believe that there is light at the end of the tunnel, since the way we respond to adversity shapes our mood and the journey. The blessed month of Ramadan is a month of spiritual and moral growth, so what I present falls within the goals of this blessed season. Be mindful. Engage yourself in daily meditation and prayer, an amazing way of calming your nerves and gaining control over emotions, particularly negative anxiety and stress. The majestic Qur'an teaches the faithful seek help and strength through prayer and patience. Baqarah 153. Exercise patience. This is time to remain calm and composed and refused to bow to inner urges of complaints bad-mouthing the system and those around us. It's time to show that I am in control of my affairs. Become an island of resilience and the tower of patience. Undoubtedly, we are passing through the eye of a hurricane that is devastating our economy and possibly our loved ones. Don't be frustrated with yourself and feel sad and stressed. Remember, it's hard for everyone. Narrated by Anas, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The real patience is at the first stroke 
of a calamity. Bukhari. Care for others. The two-metre social distancing rule is physical distancing. However, since the lockdown, we've become socially more connected through technology. So here is an opportunity to share care and kindness towards others through generosity for those who are more needy. The self-sacrifices of the heroes of the NHS are exemplary for us. The Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us. None of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Bukhari Live simply and frugally. Extravagance was the hallmark of our society before the COVID-19 pandemic. We love to live like Hollywood celebrities, globetrotting, two holidays abroad every year, designer clothes at a click of a button, eating out a few times a week. Now, this is the time to shed those extravagant habits and to learn to live simply. This will help both our health and Mother Earth as we have become more environmentally friendly. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Indeed, simple living is part of faith. Abu Dawood This lockdown is teaching us a lot, especially to recognise what is vanity and how we should avoid it. This bloated desire to be praised for our looks, clothes, career, rank, the car we drive and the house we live in. Well, the lockdown has taught us what's important and what's hubris, the false sense of pride. That is it for today. The book's details, including where it can be downloaded from, is on the episode details. Please do join the Islamic Audio Bytes community on Facebook to feedback as well as any other comments you may have. Also, any reviews on the platform that you are listening on would be greatly appreciated. We are also on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter and Reddit. Please do check out our website at islamicaudiobytes.com. Thank you once again for joining us today. Hope your day is full of goodness. Assalamu alaikum.